Hi there. My name is Oliver and I'll be your treating physician for this evening. I see you've come in here for a suspected head injury or something like that. Is this right? Hmm. I understand. Well, I know the nurses would have seen you prior to seeing me. However, I did just want to peruse your medical chart to make sure I have all relevant and necessary information, including your medical history. So, please bear with me as I peruse your chart. If you just like to take a seat where you are while I peruse for a moment, dear. Mm. I see. Okay. Okay. Right. So, do you have a history of any uh, high blood pressure or cardiac issues? Or heart and lung issues that I should know of. It always pays to double check, even after checking the chart. But uh, it says here that we have a suspected head injury. What do you think? Is that accurate or...? Okay. Right. Well, as I mentioned earlier, the nursing staff would have taken your vital signs already, namely your blood pressure, your heart rate or pulse, as well as your respiration rate, respiratory rate, and temperature. So all of those came back okay, which is promising. However, after a head injury, we would like to err on the side of caution, of course. We want to be sure that you can walk out of here knowing that there are no central or peripheral issues that we might not pick up. So today we'll be going through a assessment, some medical tests to ensure that you are feeling fine post-injury, as minor as it is, or mild as it is, I'd just like to be safe, better safe than sorry, of course, less paperwork for me, but also ensuring your safety. Well, I'll just uh, get my gloves on here, uh, give me a second. It never gets any easier getting these on, especially after having sanitized so much today. Please bear with me. And how are you feeling at this moment? I see. Do you feel dizzy? Any headache, shortness of breath, okay, I understand, right, now, I'll be asking you a series of questions and performing a few tests, like I mentioned, none of these will be invasive, very general tests. To ensure your safety. Uh, I'll just start off really quickly by inspecting your eyes after any sort of head injury. We want to inspect for our level of consciousness and responsiveness using a scale known as the Glasgow Coma Scale. So please do try your best to relax. 
works as best you can, please, while I inspect and observe and examine your eyes. Please just look ahead, concentrating on nothing in particular, while I inspect your eyes for any abnormal responses, which appears to be clear. So that's good news. With the Glasgow Kerner scale, also checking for verbal response or yeah, responding to me and my questions. And you've already checked off that side of the assessment, as of course you are responding to me and my questions. But I'll just ask you your full name and date of birth, please. Just your full name and date of birth. Hmm. Okay. Excellent. No issues there. The last thing I'll ask you to do is just what we call a voluntary muscle contraction and being able to follow a gross motor command. Essentially, I'll just ask you to squeeze my hand uh, or just my, yeah, my gloved section, please, for infection control. Just give my hand a firm squeeze, please, as though you are going to shake my hand. <laughs> and then could you please repeat that with the other side for me? Yep. Just with the other side, yeah. Squeezing my hands. Excellent. So it appears that we are completely conscious, of course. And on the Glasgow Cola scale, we rate a 15 out of 15, which is top marks and full uh, consciousness. No signs of any abnorm abnormalities, rather there. Uh, the next thing I just like to check is a few respiratory things. As I'm going to be getting quite close, I'll just be wearing a mask here for safety reasons. Just allow to apply this one over the top. Excellent. Now, I'll just have my stethoscope prepared now. If I could just ask you to please relax as best you can, sitting up nice and tall. That's it. Prim and proper posture, exactly. I'm just going to be placing the stethoscope on various parts of your front of your chest, as well as on the back listening for any abnormalities, any changes to your breathing, breath sounds, etc. Um, so, just a routine thing. I'll get you to breathe in through your mouth and exhale through your mouth as well, please. Nice, strong, deep breaths, please. Does that make sense? Right, well, let us continue. Starting on the front, now, this is a little bit cold, so I'll just warm it up for you. Okay, that should do it. So, are you ready? Yeah, nice deep breath in through the mouth, out through the mouth. Good, you're doing well. Please continue. How are you feeling so far? Excellent. Let's continue. We're almost done. I'll just do the posterior side of you now, or the back part of your lungs. You're doing well. Keep up the good work. In through the mouth, out through the mouth.
fantastic. And then on top here. Well done. Right. How do you feel? Not short of breath or struggling to breathe or anything like that. Moreover, it's not painful, sharp or sore pain at all when you inhale, especially deeply. Understood. Well, just remove this mask now. And I did just want to have a bit of a palpate of your head. I know the nurses would have inspected to make sure that your head was looking okay. Uh, but I just want to do a quick inspection on top there. And making sure there's no open wounds up in there that maybe did not get dressed. But everything seems to be okay there. Excellent. Nothing of note there. A few very minor scratches here and there, but that is okay. Right. Now, the other thing I would like to examine is what we call a HINTS examination, an acronym H I N T S. HINTS stands for three tests, it stands for uh, the combination of three tests. We have the head impulse test, test for nystagmus, as well as a test of skew, H-I-N-T-S, hints. So our first portion of this test, number one, is our head impulse test. You mentioned you might be getting some dizziness or signs of vertigo, so it's just worth checking to see if there are any peripheral or central causes um, with those. Are you still experiencing these symptoms? Hmm. Ah, I see. Okay. Well, these are very quick to do. No uh, sharp pains or anything, but should be feeling okay by the end of this. Just let me know if at any point you feel discomfort, doesn't feel right, or you would just like me to stop for whatever reason, that's completely fine. I can adjust my approach accordingly. So let's begin. I'll just begin by clasping or grasping your head. Now we're just going to be moving your head slowly left and right and then quickly moving it and observing your symptoms as well as your eyes for any corrective responses or saccades, anything like that. So let's see how we go. Chest slowly, slowly turning and then rapidly. Okay, it's looking good. And the other side, when you're doing well, just try to breathe and relax. now. <laughs> Fantastic. So that head impulse test is negative, which is a good thing. Negative meaning good. Let's move on to a test for nystagmus. Now I'll get you to focus your gaze onto my nose here. Now while focusing on my nose or potentially something else, um, whatever is easiest for you, I want you to look to your left and your right. So maintaining your gaze, but looking to one way and then the other, as I have just demonstrated. So I'd like to see you give that a try now, focusing on my nose or another aspect. Hmm. Okay, I'm just observing your eyes there. Could you please go the other direction now? Yes. Okay, excellent, excellent, excellent. That is good. Well done. 
negative as well. Perfect. And you're feeling fine. No symptoms. Perfect. Well, let's do our last test out of the hints. And that is our test of skew. So for this test, I will be covering one of your eyes like so, hopefully like that, and then switching to cover the other eye quite quickly. So we'll be going, covering your left, covering your right quickly. And I'm just observing your eyes once again for any signs of abnormality there. So let's see how we go covering one eye. And the other eye. A couple of more times. This one. Hmm. I see. And that is okay as well. Negative. So let's continue. You're doing well so far. And again, we're just making sure that we are as thorough as possible. I would hate for you to walk out of here and to find out we have not identified something because we were careless. So um, let's continue on. Next, I'll be checking what's known as your dermatomes and your myotomes. Neurologically linked, these dermatomes are areas of the body that are innervated uh, by a single spinal nerve. And these spinal nerves arise from, of course, our spinal cord and they provide sensation such as touch and pressure, uh, things like that in certain areas of the body. So we'll be looking for your dermatomes in your upper limb and we're going to be doing it with soft touch. That is with a cotton bud, as you see here. Yeah, you can probably feel that. That feels okay. And then this one, good, that's just a demo, and we will be doing that also with sharp touch. Usually I'd be using a neuro tip, but this will be uh, my substitute. So let's see how we go, sharp and blunt testing. This will not hurt, you'll just feel a gentle sensation of each one in certain areas. So we start with our C4 across the cromioclavicular joint in the anterior portion or front portion of our shoulder region there. Now, can you differentiate between this, the cotton bud, and this? Hmm. Sharp and blunt. The other way around, yep. Soft and sharp in that order. Very good. Let's move on to C5, which is in this sort of deltoid region there. Now, if you could please close your eyes throughout this, that way you don't see what is happening. Just try to relax while I put the bud here. Do you feel that on your deltoid or on the side of your shoulder? Excellent. And then C6. That's it. On the thumb. Excellent. You felt that there. And then C7. Where did you feel that? on your middle finger, yes, and then C8, dermatomal distribution, your little finger, excellent. And then lastly, for your upper limb, we'll test T1, mm -hmm. just on the medial side of, medial aspect rather, of your anti-cubital anti fossa region on the inside of your elbow, essentially. Did that feel okay? You felt that, yeah, that's good. Well, I'll put the cotton bud and sharps aside. In fact, I'll be disposing this in my sharps bin here, just to make sure that we have no safety issues going forward for infection control. Very important in this day and age, of course. So, moving on, let's test your myotomes. Myo, Latin word, uh, 
Latin roots rather, meaning muscle. So myotome, naturally, we are testing your muscles. Now, these are regions and muscles that are, of course, innervated by certain spinal nerves as well, similar uh, in description to the dermatomes, which we had just examined. So how do we examine the upper body's myotomes? Well, we perform a little jig <laughs> known as the <laughs> myotome dance. That's how I remember it at least. There's more professional ways, but what I will ask you to do to test your C4 myotome is to shrug your shoulders like so, down and up, testing your upper trapezius muscles and C4 myotomal distribution, shrugging up. And then your C5, which is performing an elbow flexion type movement or a chicken wing, that's it, shoulder abduction or elbow flexion, both perfect. Next, I will get you to uh, extend your wrists, extend, flex your wrists for me, perfect, C7, C6 rather, and then for C7 myotome, I'll get you to extend your elbow, I'll get you to extend your elbow, extend your elbow and fully straighten. Perfect, that's looking very good. You're following along well. Let's move on to our C8, which is our wrist, uh, finger flexion rather, and thumb extension, this sort of position. So finger flexion, thumb extension. Please imitate that for me. double thumbs up and then a last one for our upper body myotomes I'll get you to do your fingers moving them apart splaying them for your T1 myotome excellent we call that finger abduction and that is looking quite good as well so your dermatomes myotomes, hence examination, respiratory examination, and Glasgow Coma Scale are all okay. There were exceeding expectations or doing fine. So the other thing I noticed was that you had a few open wounds just scattered around various parts your upper body there. So I'll just apply some bandages there. Uh, the nurses definitely got the most of them, but I just noticed a few where we could apply some extra bandaging just over there. So just going to apply some friction on those ones. Just get a nice roll. That should do it. We'll just tension and just apply a bit of that medical tape there to get it in the right area. Now that side's done, let's just do the other one now. And that's not too tight, I hope. That feels okay. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Just applying a bit of finishing touches. There we go. Perfect, and that should do it. Roll that one up. Make sure that stays. Okay, I'll just place the excess aside. And I noticed on your chart earlier that you were reporting or complaining of a little bit of lower back pain. Now, is this right? Do you have any pins and needles or numbness or any bladder and bowel issues? is provide you a referral to a physiotherapist just to get that checked out uh, if it is a concern of yours. Um, allow me to write down 
this referral now and I also provide a script that you can take to the pharmacist in order to acquire some medication for your headaches. Just some non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs or, or NSAIDs as we call them to help with your headache symptoms and general low-level pain. So here is your script. I'll just hand that one to you. Yeah, it's got my signature on there. Should have no troubles if you just present that one to the pharmacist downstairs and I'll send an email giving the physios a detailed handover about your lower back pain. In the meantime, uh, I'd hate to leave you without anything done for it, but I did recently complete a taping course and I can apply some tape over that lower back region for you just to ensure that you don't walk out of here with nothing done on your back. So I'll just get the tape prepared. Now this is kinesiology tape or flexible tape and it's quite a big roll as you can see. So we'll just snip off a little bit of that. Now you're not allergic to any band-aids or adhesives that you know of. Okay we'll just snip off about that much and that's just going to go horizontally across your lower back. so slightly perfect just like that we'll just apply this tape just on that lower back region there perfect and that should start to feel like it has a little bit of support through there. So I think that'll conclude our session for today. I'll leave you to it and if there's any other issues please don't hesitate to contact us. We're just one phone call away especially if that lower back pain starts to have some pins and needles or you notice some issues with bladder and bowel things like that. Muscle power loss in the legs sudden muscle power loss please don't hesitate to get in contact with us also if you have any of those symptoms from earlier such as the quite aggressive vertigo as well as those uh, dizziness that type of thing but from what it seems all the tests i've performed previously you are okay there's no issues uh, there but Take that script that I wrote you to the pharmacist downstairs and you'll be able to have some medications there just to help out until you start to feel 100%, which we should be feeling very, very soon. Okay, I must duck off now with uh, my next patient, but uh, glad to see you and I hope you uh, enjoyed your experience here today. Um, take care and I would appreciate it if you hit that thumbs up button but also click the subscribe button and the notification bell for more ASMR content like this one. Take care and I'll see you all in the next video. <laughs> Thank you to my amazing patrons Megan, Electra, Amado, L, Joaquin, Gabriel, Patrick, Troy, Andres Olan Vasquez, Stephen Underwood, Anthony Espinoza, Michaela, Rajan, Blaine Bettinger, 
David Emanuelson, Beth Burton, Josh Santana, Fun Size Kiki, Fading Muses, Here's Mikey, Curious Mad Cat, Stephen Joyce, Abby Lynn, James Peacock, Jessica Montez, Kylie Denton, Julia, Leah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you.